the X value keeps getting lower and lower. We have to add the FPS so that we can see, is it actually fast? Maybe I will add a competition for that. The reason I have separated this into functions is so that Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. Today we are going to build this amazing dino game. As you can see, we are using computer vision at the back end and it is running automatically and it is detecting the objects, it is jumping and we are not using any fancy techniques here. We are using very simple image processing and it is able to do this in real time. As you can see, we are not dropping below 30 FPS and the game is over. So we can uh, replay this and it will continue again. So uh, this is not using the JavaScript hack that removes the function for deleting or for the game over and it just uh, keeps playing. That's not what we're doing here. We are challenging ourselves to create some uh, useful games. So uh, I've actually seen a lot of people doing this with hardware. They use uh, Arduino with the servo motor, they press the spacebar button and so on. But we are not doing any of that. We are using plain old computer vision with some good image processing. And uh, yeah, that's the basic idea. And once you complete this, I have just done the very basic part. Uh, what I want you to do is once you complete this, challenge yourself to make it better. Right? There's a lot of techniques out there that can make this better. So maybe I will add a competition later on uh, in which uh, you, you have to get the highest score. So maybe that will be uh, the next thing after that. So make sure you try it out. It's a very fun exercise and it doesn't take a long time to do this. Within an hour or two, you can do this. And uh, the code is available for free. You can download it uh, very easily from our website. I have shown the process and everything uh, during the tutorial. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing we are going to do is we are going to get the code so that we can go step by step and see what exactly are we building. So if you want to access the code right away, what you can do is you can click on the link below or you can simply go to CVZone website and here you will click on projects. And within the projects, you will have automated dino game. Uh, we can click on that. And then if you go down, you will see you do not currently have access to this content. When this appears, it means that either you did not enroll or you did not sign in. So you can simply click here and log in or register if you haven't. Then once you register, all you have to do is you have to click on enroll now. And then now you will see this line comes in and now you can go down and click on code. So that will give you the access to the code and that's how simple it is. So this is the code that we are going to follow today to create our project. So I will put that on the side and here we have our PyCharm project and uh, the name is Dino Game. We'll go to file settings and we will do the installations in Python interpreter. We'll click on add and here we are going to write CV zone. So we'll install that. That will automatically install uh, NumPy and OpenCV for us. Now we also need PyAuto GUI. PyAuto GUI, there you go. And uh, what this will do is this will allow us to get the screenshots of our uh, main screen or um, yeah we can we can do MSS instead that also allows us to do that so it depends which one you want to use so we can use auto GUI by auto GUI there you go so we are going to install both of these because we do need by auto GUI later on to actually simulate the press of the keyboard for the dino game and we also install MSS to have a faster screenshot. So I will explain all of that later on, don't worry. If you don't get it now, that's fine. Uh, by the way, I'm using Python 3.10. Uh, if you want to use a different version, you can use that too. But uh, you might face some issues here and there if you are using a very old version or if you are using a very new version. So just be careful of that. Okay, so first of all, what we'll do is we will import everything we need. Uh, there you go. We are going to import CB2 
this is the open cv cv zone numpy as np py auto gui cv zone dot fps import fps so this will give us the frame rate and this will allow us to see the difference between py auto gui and the uh, mss now the first thing we need to do is we need to get the screenshot so we need to get the screenshot so that we can look at our game so let's look at the game first so this is the game that we have it's on pocky.com so i will i will share the link of that as well you can um, search that and you can directly click on it if you want then the idea is that we are going to get the screenshot of this region and based on that we will do some processing so what we will do is we are going to get the screenshot to do that we are going to use to do that we are going to use a function and that function is by the name capture screen region open cv so this is the function that we have created what it does is it uses pi auto gui and it takes a screenshot of the region starting from x y and then the desired width and the desired height and then we convert this into an open cv format so that we can use it in our processing so before we do that we have to convert it into a numpy format and then we can convert it into open cv so what we'll do is first of all we are going to test if this works or not so we will write here while true and then we are going to simply call this function and we are going to get in any number, uh, any part of the screen that we want. In fact, let's start from 0, 0, and then we will start with 500 and 500. So that's the idea. And then what we will do is, uh, once we uh, call this function, it will give us the screenshot. So we will call it, let's say, image game equals this, and cv2 dot im show we are going to show our game and the image game and then we will write cv2 dot wait key and we will give in one millisecond delay so let's go ahead and run this so once i run this there you go so this is what i'm getting so if i move my mouse here uh, it's not actually giving me the screenshot of that why is that uh, let's move that okay yeah it's real time so that's the idea, that's what we are getting. So if I scroll, you can see it actually moves around and you can see the different results. So that's good. Now, once we have that, we need to get the exact region and the exact region I have already checked and it is 450, then it is 300, then 650 and 200. So again, this is the X, Y width and height. So let's rerun that. And if we minimize this, there you go. So that's the game that we are getting. So it's basically cropping a region from there. And that is giving us some good results here. So if I play this now, you will see that it will actually give us the actual game. So that's pretty good. So our first part is done and it's quite simple. As you can see, um, it's not that complicated. Now, the next step is to crop the region in the desired area. Now, we already did a crop, but that crop is for the game itself. Now we need to crop for the processing part. So we don't want to give everything. Uh, what we want to do is we want to get the section of the region that we want to process. but what exactly is happening? How are we processing? So we are not using any fancy techniques. What we are trying to do is we are trying to get this as an obstacle. Now, what we can do is we can use AI methods. We can use object detection to train a model and then get these detections. But that's kind of an overkill because we have a fixed background. We have a, a fixed environment and we don't have a lot of variations uh, in that. So it's, it's quite easy to get the information from this. So what we will do is we will crop the region so that the dinosaur, first of all, does not appear. Because if 
if the dinosaur appears, then we will have to differentiate between the dinosaur and the obstacle. So that can be a little bit difficult. And given that the dinosaur actually remains at the same location, so the game is actually moving, the dinosaur is fixed. So we don't need to worry about the dinosaur. So what we'll do is we will take the region of this part and we will crop it before the land area, before this line, because we are going to use contour methods. We are going to use edges to find different obstacles. Now, if this line is detected, then all of this will be one single obstacle, all of this big part, the line plus this, plus this, plus this, everything will become um, one single object, but that's not what we want. So what we will do is we will take a layer of that right above this region and then up till here. So something like that, so that we have only a strip of that region where we can differentiate between different objects. So I think that's a lot of talking and not a lot of doing. So let's go ahead and do it. So now uh, first thing we will do, we will write here. Uh, this was step one. So I like to give numbers so that it's easier to follow which step are you doing and what exactly is happening. Now we will move on to step two. In step two, we are cropping our main image, the image game. We are further cropping it. Now for the width, we are saying that we are going to push it 110 pixels forward and then till the end. And for the height, we are saying start the height at 100 and then stop the height at 140. So the height is starting at 300 and then it finishes at 200 uh, plus 200, so 500. So the, the, the total image height is uh, 200. So instead of getting all the 200 pixels, we are simply getting 40 pixels. That's it in the height. And for the width, we are uh, subtracting 650 by 110. So that's how many pixels we are getting. So what we can do is we can display this. Uh, we can write here image crop. And we can write here image crop and we can rerun this. So if we look at that, now there you go. So here, this is the best part that the dinosaur is not shown. So barely, that's the point where the dinosaur starts. And then we are able to see this separately. So if we go further down, we might get the line. And sometimes the line has a bump. So we want to avoid that as well. Uh, let me play the game actually to check that out. So we need to avoid the bumps. So I'm not very good at this game apparently. <laughs> so, okay, that's difficult because um, so yeah, if you see down, you can see we have all the obstacle regions. So that's what we were going for. And that is exactly what we are getting. Now, once that is done, we have to go and find the obstacles or uh, no, not find the obstacle. We have to do processing, pre-processing before we can find the obstacles. So let's go ahead and do some pre-processing. So let me copy the part of pre-processing and there you go. So this is the pre-processing function. We will send in our image cropped. First of all, we will convert it into grayscale. Uh, then we are going to apply threshold, which means we will convert it into a binary image, uh, which means that either it will be zero, which means black, or either it will be 255, which means it is white. So zero or one or zero or 255. Uh, that's basically what our image will be. And we are using the inverse part because uh, we want our obstacle to be white and the background to be black. So that's why we are using the inverse. And this is just the center value. Uh, it's, it's not anything that we uh, actually tuned. And then we have the canny. So once we have our black and white image, then we have the canny image. So actually, let me show you these uh, so that you get the idea of what exactly is going on. 
So cp 2im show we are going to show in the binary frame. So we did not call the function, we have to call it. And we are going to paste this here, uh, image crop. And let's run it. And there you go. So if you look at this now, this is our new image. And you can see it is now the, the region or the obstacle is basically white and the background is black. If we don't do the inverse, then it will be the opposite. So we have to use the inverse. So that's good. We are able to see this. Let's comment that out. And then we have the canny. So here, let's show you the canny cb2 dot I am show and we are going to show in oh I pressed the wrong button canny frame so let's rerun that and there you go so now you can see instead of the complete regions now we are getting uh, edges right and these edges they sometimes are not very well defined so that's why we add a dilation to it. And we have two iterations of that. So it will make it a little bit thicker so that if there is anything missing between the lines or um, if it's open from the edges or something like that, it's going to fill that out. So it will make it easier for us to process this. So cb2 dot I am show dilated. And there you go. So now you can see it's a little bit dilated. And sometimes, um, uh, now you might say that you can directly use the, the threshold image as well, which is kind of true. Uh, if we do the iteration as one, then we will see the bigger difference. There you go, that's a bigger difference. Uh, but yeah, you can use, I believe you can use uh, directly this as well. So I, I did not try that. I try it and probably it should work as well so yeah so let's go on to the next part where we are going to go ahead and detect the obstacles so before we do that let me just write that this is our step number three and we are also returning back our pre-processed image so that we can send it to our obstacle parts finding obstacles so step number four uh, we have find obstacles so let's copy that part and this is very easy it's a single line function we need the image cropped and we need the pre-processed image and then we are using cv zone find contours function this makes it very easy to find contours sort them based on area sort them based on filter and so on but we don't want to filter any number of uh, edges so for example if you were detecting a square you would write here four if you were detecting a triangle you would write three but if you write none then it will detect everything and then this is the minimum area because we don't want to uh, detect noise so 100 is the minimum that we should detect and pre-processed and image crop and this will return us the image and it will return us the contours that have been found and then it will return it. So it will return here. And now what we can do is we can simply show our image contour as well. And let's see how it looks like. So there you go. So image contour, now it's drawing on that. And you can see that there is a very distinct um, you can say difference between these two obstacles. So they are different. But if we don't uh, crop it the, with the height appropriately and the, the, the line is actually showing, then this will become one object. It's a possibility that it can become one object and the object becomes very big and not good at all. So that was the idea of how you can find the obstacles and then what we will do is we'll go on to step number six so step number uh, no sorry step number five which is actually the logic so in the logic we have to apply the game logic the reason i have separated this into functions is so that for example we want to use a different way of capturing the screen so i can just replace this function with a different one and it can return us the same value 
and then the rest of it can re remain the same. Same goes for pre-processing. So if I want to use a different method of pre-processing or if I want to use a different method to find obstacles, maybe using AI, then I can simply replace this function and the rest of it has to be the same. Like it can be the same given that it returns the same values. Okay, uh, that being said, now let's move on to the game logic. So the game logic, let me copy that part. Copy, 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 and paste, paste, paste. There you go. So in the game logic, what we are doing is we are looping through all the contours that we have found. Now, what ex exactly is inside the contour? Inside the contour is an object that has a bounding box. It has uh, the number of points. It has area. It has the starting X, Y position and all that. So what we are doing is we are, first of all, instead of looping through using a for loop, we are using a single line function. And what this does is it allows us to sort based on the X value. Now this X is confusing because we are talking about X and then we are talking about X here and then X here. It's a little bit confusing. This X is not actually the value X. X is just like I, you know, X, Y, Z, M, G, things like that. So it's just a variable name. So we are saying that X, we need to sort it based on the bounding box value number zero. The bounding box value number zero is basically the value of X. So we are saying sort it based on the value of X. So that will, what it will do is it will give us the very first obstacle. So for example, over here, I don't want this obstacle. I want this obstacle because this is the one I want to jump from first. And maybe this is the next one. But here, this is the first one I need to jump from. So what I will do is I will find the X of this. And once I have the X position, so let me just print out the leftmost uh, position counter. Yeah, we need to do that as well because that will give us, so leftmost contour is not the actual X value. So we have to get the bounding box uh, element number one, element number zero, that will give us the X. So uh, let me just uh, write, did I put it here? Yeah, it's already there. So let's run that and you will see here, there you go. So here you can see the X, if you go in the start, okay, let me stop that because it's not going to the start. <laughs> So there you go. The in the in the beginning the x was 76, 76, 172, and then the x became zero, uh, probably because it moved or something like that happened. Uh, anyway, so that's the idea. The x value will keep reducing. Actually, let me show you that again so you can understand it better. There you go. So now you will see. There you go. Th this is the x value. The x value keeps getting lower and lower. So what we need to do is we need to say that if the X value becomes lower than a threshold, then jump. So that value, so you can see here, it says jump. That threshold we have given as 65. So this is the jump distance. Uh, now, again, you can change it. You can make it 50, you can make it 40, you can make it 100, depending on uh, how well it performs. So what happens here is that, uh, forget about this line for now. What happens here is that we are saying that once we get the X value, if that is lower than the jump distance, so here, for example, it became 58 and it's lower than 65, then we are saying pyautogui.press simulate the spacebar press and then print jump just for the sake of it. So that's the basic idea. It's very simple. Just jump uh, once the value reduces. And what we are doing here extra is that we are drawing on our image contours. So what this will do is uh, it will allow us to display a line so that we can see that the distance is getting closer and closer. So let me actually show you here. 
I am show image contours and image contours. Let's run that. And there you go. So you can see here, this line becomes lower and lower and it tells us that the distance is reducing. But this, the aesthetics of this is not very good because it's not overlaying on the game itself. So what we will do is we will take this whole image and we will simply overlay it here like this. That's it. So we will overlay it back to the original image and that will tell us, okay, you have detected the object. This is how far it is and it will look better. So we are doing it for the aesthetics part. So uh, let's remove the spaces it added. So now what we are doing is we are simply sending back our image contours. And what we can do is we can, um, we can, sh we can overlay again on our main image, the image contours. So what we have to do is in step number six, what we do is we overlay it back. So these were the values. So that's why we put it in variable so that we can use it again uh, for displaying the result for overlaying it. So you can see that this and this are exactly the same. So earlier we were cropping that part. Now we are saying to this part, add this new image. And I believe that's pretty much it. So once you are done, let me check. Uh, yeah, we need to add the FPS, but before we do that, Let's go ahead and check this out. There you go. So now it's giving us how far it is and the distance from our object. There you go. And it hits there. So uh, that's pretty good. Let's stop that. And now what we have to do is we have to add the FPS so that we can see, is it actually fast or is it actually slow? Uh, based on uh, our code. So, so what we will do is we will create an FPS reader here. Again, this is part of the CV zone package, FPS. And what we have to do is here is that we simply need to update and that's pretty much it. And we need, we can also give in the image on which we want to display. So if we want to display on image game, we will simply give in uh, our image game here and it will return us the image game and we can display it here again. By the way, let's remove these two because our image game is pretty much giving us the all the details that we want. So let's run that and see what happens. There you go. So right now the FPS is low. It's around 15, 14. Uh, when, when there's not a lot of processing, the FPS is higher then it decreases it's 20 so a lower S uh, fps is really hitting us because it's not very good because we need to have a quick response so what exactly can we do now the last thing we can do to increase the fps is to use mss so this is the library that we are going to use uh, we already installed it from MSS, import MSS. And then we are going to, now this is the best part. That's why we are using functions. Because now, instead of deleting this, changing the code, doing all of that, I can simply paste capture screen region open CV by MSS, that's it. So earlier I was doing it with a different library. Now I'm using MSS. So I just wrote MSS and it takes in the same parameters and it outputs the same parameters. So that's the best part. So all I have to do is now I can go here, uh, here and I can write underscore MSS. That's it. So now our FPS should increase. There you go. We are already getting 60 frames, around 60 frames. Uh, where is the image? Uh, it's here, okay. So let's run it. And now it's running at automation. You can see now it's faster and the better response. Now one another way to do this, you can see it's, it's still a little bit laggy. Now what you can use is threading to actually increase the speed of this. But I think that's too much for a simple game. And specifically if we are not uh, creating it as a challenge, maybe we should make it a challenge um, that 
So this is a this is a task that a competition that whoever gets the highest score, not not using the JavaScript hack. I, I've seen that where you just remove the game over function and it just keeps running. No, not like that. So we we have to do it the legal way, <laughs> the computer vision way. So uh, again, maybe I will add a competition for that. If, if that sounds good, uh, let me know in the comments below. So as you can see, it, it works quite well. And the highest score here, 463, is by this AI, or you can say, or by this computer vision robot, so to speak. So that's the basic idea of this project. I hope you have learned something new. I hope you like the project. If you did, make sure to like, subscribe. And if you loved it, share it with your friends. Make sure you try it out, add it to your CV, share it with your friends and tag me as well. Uh, I, I would love to see what do you guys uh, come up with or if you can improve uh, the total score. Right now it's 463. Oh, it's already at 500. So uh, by the time we are actually reviewing this, it's at, uh, okay. So 637 is the number to beat. So if you can do that with AI, uh, with the computer vision then do share it with me i will um, probably on linkedin or you can email as well so that's it for today i will see you in the next one